Hello and welcome to the second part of the Lego Powered Up tutorial. You can use it for Lego Boost and Lego Control Plus 2 because all of the hardware is compatible and all of it can be programmed with the Powered Up app. And this is the state of the last tutorial part. We have a starting point that starts the execution of the program and everything after that gets executed one part after the other. And we had two blocks to control the motor. First, we have the power control that controls the power that's given to the motor. It doesn't control the actual speed. That's uh, something that I simplified in the last part. We'll discuss that later in this tutorial. You can set the port of the hub. Not all hubs have four ports, so you can select either A or B. Or if you have a Technic Hub or a Move Hub from LEGO Boost, you can select uh, all four ports, or you can link ports together like A and B or C and D. And with the second argument, you can set the power. The power can be 100 for full speed, 0 for nothing, for stop, minus 100 or negative 100 for full speed in reverse, and everything in between. And we had a dedicated stop block that stops the motor. I have a few coding tips and this program already is in conflict with one tip because uh, my suggestion is that you try to use as least paths as possible. Try to stick with one programming path with one start block as long as possible. You can do, I'd say, almost every normal program with just one path as long as you don't use a remote control or a touch screen layout. So we remove that and now we have one block that starts the motor. And there are actually quite a few things that you can do with just one motor. You can make a winking cat that sits in the window and always uh, moves moves the hand. You can make a claw that can close and open. Maybe you have the Lego Harry Potter oval set with Hedwig that you can motorize with one motor to make a fly movement. Or you can do what I did and use a train that contains a motor. And with a start block I can say the train that it should start forward. But maybe it should stop at one point so we can use a stop block as well. However, running this program won't do much because we start the motor and immediately after that we stop again. So there's basically no time where the motor can move. So we have to put a delay in between. And for that, that we can use a yellow block, the wait block. This block simply waits for one second. So if you want to know what this program does, we can simply press the start button or we can think about what it does and first the program starts then it launches the motor or the motor starts with the speed of 50 then it waits one second and the motor stops so in conclusion the train will drive for one second we can check that i will start the program and the train moved for one second what a surprise. And this is another suggestion that I have. You should always try to test your programs as often as possible. Don't put five blocks after the last change and test then. Only put one or two new blocks into the program and test again, as long as you don't know what you're doing or you're not entirely sure. Because the program might not do what you want and then you know what you did to make it do what it does. So it's easier to find mistakes or errors if you make many tests. And with that, we already have a new block that we can use, the wait block that, that can wait for a given amount. But I will introduce another block in this part, the second motor block. And both motor blocks look almost the same. Both take some kind of port and some kind of speed. 
However, this one actually controls the power. Last part I said that it controls the speed, but that's not entirely correct. It controls the power that the hub gives to the motor. This one checks if the motor actually has the speed and puts more power if it doesn't meet the speed that it should meet. So basically, this one checks if it actually have, has the speed. So you can have different loads and it will try to compensate the effect of the load so that it can move with a constant speed. Of course, that's only possible as long as it doesn't need too much energy to move. And this one simply moves with a given amount of energy. That means if you block the motor, it will not try to continue or it won't give it more energy to move. It will stay with the current amount of energy. And also, if the hub is overloading, then it will stop to power the motor. However, there's one thing to keep in mind. This block that checks the speed only works with models or only with motors that have speed sensors. All Control Plus motors that are currently available have speed sensors. All boost motors have, or the only boost motor has a speed sensor. The Mindstorms and Spike Prime motors have rotation sensors. But the train motor and the simple motor that looks like the Power Functions M motor don't have speed sensors, so they can't use this programming block. Anyways, that was this part of the tutorial. If you didn't understand something or have other questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. It's hard to know what works and what doesn't work without feedback. So please give me feedback. Do you like this tutorial? You can tell me as well, or also if you don't like it. And uh, keep the two tips from this part in mind. First, always test your programs and don't make too many changes without testing it. And secondly, try to stay with as least programming playlists as possible. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you in the next part.